Hey, uh, this is FRJ Racing here with another update on Drift Crew. Uh, today we got a bunch of final features before uh, I jump into what you might see in the title is online multiplayer. So, what we got going on in uh, Drift Crew 0 0.3 update is a few kind of nice things to have before I jump into uh, further development. So first of all, you might have noticed the eye candy already. Uh, you have some post-processing that uh, can be turned off if your computer can't handle this. I know this pushes my um, my GTX 1070 actually uh, near to 90% with all the post-processing. Um, and my frame rate's fine, but uh, you got things like uh, screen space reflections and uh, other fancy things going on so uh, you might see some of those effects here with the lighting um, the next thing is mirror mode which goodness gracious is a, was a very interesting <laughs> uh, thing to find out how that all works because like in in the easy way you could just scale something in like the whatever direction this is so if this is the z-axis, if you're going across here, you just scale something negative one. But the thing is, I had to do this based on rotations um, because you don't want to scale your game assets um, to fit something like mirror mode. You want to treat your parts as if you spawn them and then that's how they work. Uh, which led to a very interesting consequence where you have parts with a, a symmetry line that's at 45 degrees like this um, it's meaning that if you're the look at the symmetry line it'd be from corner to the corner and then another part might have a 90 degree symmetry line so <laughs> going through all this and learning about relative quaternion uh, projections and stuff uh, that was a lot of fun to kind of get it all working but now we do have mirror deletion and mirror placing so now uh, mirror mode is officially supported um, and something else that you can do is with the bracket keys you can move the mirror line so you can kinda see how that you know it's just some standard feature you should be used to so another thing is I made it so you can mirror wheels, but you can't mirror parts that you should have more than one of, like the engine, transmission, and differential. Well, that's a transmission, that's a differential. I know they definitely look like what they're called, but just trust me on that. <laughs> um, the final thing is, let's get that back to normal, is I've kind of made things a little bit easier to work with when it comes to... Uh, when you build and then we go to drive mode it creates an auto save so then the auto save can be found uh, in the same location as your game save file I talked about this in the last video but uh, it's in your local disk C uh, if you're on Windows I don't know what it is for anything else and then your users and then your whatever username uh, local app data and then local low and then finally you'll find Drift Crew Clan and then Drift Crew Game. And then there there you'll see you'll finally find uh the the prop files, the PROP files. Those are the car files that they load. The autosave. The way that works is when you load something, which is the car dash one file, um when you go to drive around, it auto saves that at that moment. And I did it that way because a lot of people didn't want autosave because maybe they're just trying to, you know, save one thing and then um, they're going to experiment and they don't want to commit to that change until they are cool with it. So that's why I created the uh, the autosave feature. It also kind of stabilizes the uh, the game. Like if you if you crash or something breaks, like an asset breaks in this. The autosave gets red when you go back to the garage. So I'll show that here. We'll go and try to drive around. Now, I don't know why that happens. It hits, like, the meshes in the wheels hit something <laughs> when it spawns. You might have just noticed it right there. But anyway, 
So now we're driving around, everything works, and then you're going to hit G to go back to the garage, and then uh, it completely resets the asset. So this is now fresh, and you can do whatever you're, uh, whatever else. So let's say something really bad happens, you're driving around, the car glitches, and crazy stuff happens, which it, it does. It's just the nature of the beast so far. Um, then just hitting G will totally reset the game. Um, the car and then you can continue building and doing what you want uh, something that I've noticed with just kind of experimenting is I kind of talked about this last time but the the center mass does recalculate but as you start building a bigger car the thing that tends to play the most in your center mass seems to be the transmission and differential in the engine and that is because of the size of the meshes relative to the all the other single part cubes they have a tendency to count towards that recalculation more because of the colliders that are um, the recalculation uses the colliders that are attached and all building cubes are just like a sphere and with the um, transmission and all that if you're looking at the colliders on those they're they're pretty big so again you if you're going to be tuning the suspension and the characteristics of the car you'll want to of course kind of adjust this how you will but as you start getting a more built up car you'll start noticing that subtle changes change the uh, driving characteristics less and less I kind of talked about that before, but it's it's just kind of how it how it works. So anyway, um, you'll see we got all the nice reflections, and uh, I got some different rims here. I was kind of experimenting with how easy it was to change out the wheel assets for a future update, so that you'll be able to just come up here and change your rims, and it'll just work. So I was experimenting with that, and this is kind of proof that that feature will work. Uh, I just haven't implemented the user ability to do that, but it is possible. Something I'm going to add right here, uh, I, I created a new part for the wheel arches. You might have noticed something that fits right around the wheel, kind of uh, nice and nice and flush. So that's a new part to look forward to and uh, I've tried to build this example car with all the available parts so you can kinda see what's possible um, finally the next direction I'll go with this update is we're gonna go straight to online multiplayer I did a little bit of a poll and I asked would you guys rather have like some like a better UI, like better, um, you know, the game just is like feature complete, but it's not online. Would you rather have that, or would you have or have online multiplayer at the expense of just having it as is? So that vote turned out to be online multiplayer, and I was a little bit surprised. A lot of other people were surprised, but uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go straight to online multiplayer and uh, the the idea of how that will work will be in its first update because you, you know I've been on pretty good about like a one month update schedule per, per se uh, because of the complexity of online and how my game works I'm not too sure how fast I'm gonna get it out but that's what I'm gonna be working on next uh, I'm going to be lo uh, hosting my own server. My I have a computer dedicated towards that, and I'm going to also set up my network to be geared towards that server. So, like you have the car that you see in front of you, I've packaged that inside of its own parent. So, this car right here, even though it's assembled with a bunch of other components, the localized inventory that you have available to you with your parts those are all like prepackaged assets so and it's just copying it from this list of parts 
And then so when it looks at your code in your save file, it just says, okay, I have these lists of parts and they're in this orientation and it loads it locally. When it goes over the network, all I have to do is do a, uh, is find a, a TCP. Uh, I have to create a TCP link that uh, sh that can transfer that file reliably so it doesn't get corrupted. And then once I bring it over, I already have the scripts that apparent that like the script right here that runs when I hit load. That is what builds the car. It's inherent to the script I've already wrote. So the second I can get the connection established. I've already made the biggest headroom there and then the game will just play like it does now but with other people. The the next thing that uh, I'm going to go from there once I get the initial uh, established networking and then online multiplayer you're going to have basically an open kind of world where you all spawn in and I have to figure out how to like manage spawning in and probably going to be unlimited because there's not a lot of people uh, currently on the project that are testing it concurrently. So I'm not too worried about too many people joining at the moment. However, moving fur further, I still want this to be open world, one world in general. So let's say we get more than 50 people in on this at any given moment. I still want those 50 people to be in game. So the challenge there, as you can obviously tell, is how do you manage that much performance and how do you manage the clients and all the users? So I've already done some research on optimization and stuff for large online kind of style games. And honestly, I don't think it'll be much of a problem. Uh, the server, again, that will have way more than enough power to handle the kind of data that's being transmitted. It's just a way of me setting up the management of that. So telling where, you know, allocating people where they're going to be building and where their build space is going to be. And then where, uh, when clients start talking to each other and when they're not talking to each other, if they're like miles apart, they don't need to be communicating, but they're still talking to the server. Uh, and the server doesn't need to like always send everyone's information to everyone at the same time, if that makes sense. Uh, so there's that. And then finally, once I get like those, you know, the actual online experience kind of established, then I'm going to start working on those things like the co-op building, which bec again, because of the way I've set up my game, co-op building is going to be very easy to implement. Uh, and that's something that we haven't seen in any like Robocraft or those other building games uh, on like maybe like Minecraft in a way, but this is like live co-op building. So you'd be able to stop, park the car and it looked just like this. And then you can be like, Hey, do you want to build with me? Accept some kind of prompt. And then you can do co-op building. Uh, no problems. So that's another thing that's going to be kind of like in the future. And then finally, we're going to start looking at real time events like, uh, drag races or point to point races setting up things where you can have a user create like a race or a track with points that you go through and then someone requests or in, in, initiates that race and then you guys join that race and can have you know things like lap times laps blah 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 you know that's all future stuff but Again, that's going to be a little bit in the future, but what we're going to start with is just like you can drive with each other and have that initial connection and hopefully from there, um, we'll have some really fun development. Uh, and then, yeah, that's pretty much what the news is with this game. So, yep, this has been a uh, Drift Crew Game 0.3 update and, uh... You guys can have a good afternoon.